the Smuggler's Run DLC was released way back in August of 2017. With it came a giant hangar for you to store your many new find vehicles in. This was easily the best part of this DLC as the money grind inside was utterly dreadful. For the time and effort invested, the payback was nowhere near worth it. This has all changed with the Los Santos Drug Wars DLC update in December 2020-22, a full 5 years after the Smuggler's Run. With the new update, the selling missions are now triple of what they previously were. So in this video, I will be guiding you through how you can make the most money with the least amount of effort and stress. I will be covering the best ways to fill up your hangar with the product to maximize your income and the best ways in which to sell them. This is the Ultimate Hangar Money Guide after the Drug Wars DLC. So without further ado, let's get to it. Yes, my friend! So first, you need to buy yourself a hangar. These start at $1.2 million, but could be as much as $3.25 million for a base model. These prices can still rise to over $5.6 million, depending on what other add-ons you decide to purchase. None of these add-ons will add value to your stock, but I do advise buying the living quarters so you can use your hangar as a spawn location. And you may as well buy the workshop for $1.15 million in order to modify and upgrade your helicopters and planes. If you can afford it, definitely get one of the three hangars located at Fort San Cudo Military Base for two very good reasons. The first reason is because it allows you access to the base without ever receiving a wanted level just as long as you don't start murdering anyone. You won't realise how handy this is until you experience it for yourself. The second reason is how most of the source emissions will be further north meaning less travelling distance and time in total. Personally, I suggest Hangar 3497 as it's slightly closer to the middle of the map and also over a million dollars cheaper than the one next door. Not only are there no upfront costs unlike the special cargo where you have to pay for the crates, but you'll also never get raided or lose your stock. They are 100% secure while in your hangar. The very first setup mission will be sending you out to steal a plane and delivering it back to your hangar. Our first target's a lost MC cargo shipment. Take out the guards and bring the plane to the hangar. This will trigger the ability to start sourcing your crates. The first thing you want to know is how sourcing missions can be done in solo, invite only and friend lobbies. This is a major change that came with the Criminals Enterprises DLC, so always do them here. Now, you're able to choose what cargo we're hitting here. The types of crates you may pick up are exactly the same as that of the special cargo from the CEO crates warehouses. These are narcotics, chemicals, medical supplies, animal materials, art and antiques, jewellery and gemstones, tobacco and alcohol, and counterfeit goods. Every type of crate is now worth $30,000 each, no longer the $10,000 they were previously. Filling your warehouse with all 50 crates will mean a total of $1.5 million, but there is more to it. Unlike other crate sourcing, these ones do not have any upfront costs. Each source emission is free of charge. Each type of crate has a different monetary value working in three tiers. Narcotics, chemicals and medical supplies are tier 1. Jewellery, art and animal materials are tier 2. And counterfeit goods and tobacco are tier 3. The best way to make the most money is by filling all 50 crate spaces with one of either narcotics, chemicals or medical supplies from tier 1, as these end up paying out the most money and have a larger bonus attached to them. With these three types of crates, hitting 25 crates or more, we see a 35% bonus on top, but max one of these out to a full 50 crates and the bonus doubles to 70%. Jewelry, art and animal materials start at a 12% bonus after 12 crates, but max out at 60% bonus. And counterfeit goods and tobacco have a 5% bonus after just 5 crates, but max out at 50% at 50 crates. If solo, you're probably better off sourcing tier 2 crates, as the 12% bonus kicks in from just 10 crates, and you'll still be able to sell these solo without any issue. Make sure you do not sell all three in one go though, only sell one type of product to keep the delivery mission to a minimum. I will expand upon the selling part later on in the video. But if you're sourcing with at least one other player, always source one of the tier 1 crates, and max out the full 50 with a larger selling bonus.
One of the many reasons people neglected the hangar as a business to run was because of the source emissions being too much for the payout. That said, these are actually, for the most part, quite fun to do. These can be done solo, but this does mean that you will only be able to collect one crate each time. which means a total of 50 missions if you're planning on fully restocking it. You can cut this time down dramatically by having some friends help you out with the sourcing. You can source up to four crates per mission if there are at least four people in your MC or CEO organization. So having any more helpers than this will not be necessary. You may want to consider taking turns to source these crates with a friend, therefore bypassing the cooldowns this way. So if you both decided to source tier 1 narcotics, one player would complete theirs with their friend, then quit the organization, then join their friends to help them source theirs. Then repeat the process. When you start a source mission, you will have the option to use a specially selected vehicle to complete it. Most of the time, these vehicles aren't particularly great for the job in hand, so having a personal vehicle like a Hydra is much more preferred. Hello, this is Pegasus Lifestyle Management. How can I help? Thank you, sir. Your spectacular aircraft is now ready for you at our nearest airfield. The Hydra is not only very fast, but also comes equipped with a brutal cannon, as well as being able to land pretty much anywhere. the only time you'll need to use the specific vehicle is if its icon is blue rather than white. If that is the case, you could just blow that vehicle up. Enabling you to carry on the mission in your own way. Of course, the Oppressor Mark II is still the best all-round vehicle, but your choice will depend on the mission you get. The premise of the source emissions are almost all the same, where you would go somewhere, blow some stuff up, oh! then collect the crates. If the crates are part of a vehicle that you are being asked to deliver, you can blow that vehicle up and take the crate back to the hangar in your own vehicle of choice. The missions are mainly a showcase of what the aircraft that were released with the DLC are all about and what they are capable of. When delivering, pressing right on the D-pad over the hangar will drop the crate onto the roof for collection. making it much easier to go and collect another one or help escort an associate back without having to exit your vehicle. There is one particular mission you should avoid, and that is the escort in the Titan. This mission is rather tedious and you cannot speed up how long it takes, which is at least 12 minutes. So you are better off loading into a new lobby and getting a different mission. Doing this will mean activating the cooldown period on that selected crate, just so you are aware. Another tip is when you are attacked by choppers, only ever shoot out the gunmen and not the pilot. Shooting the pilot will only cause the chopper to blow up, meaning a replacement will spawn and you're back to square one. Shooting out the gunmen means you'll end up with just the harmless helicopters following you around. I highly recommend setting up job warping before each mission, allowing you to teleport across the map much faster, ultimately saving you masses of time. If you don't know how to job warp, I'll leave a link to my guide in the description below. Sourcing these crates also has an added bonus of unlocking discount trade prices for 14 different aircrafts, starting at 3 source emissions for the Ultralight and up to 42 source emissions for the Hunter, as shown here. The cooldowns have a base time to start off with, with a minute added to that time for every added crate sourced in that mission. 
So if you delivered three crates of tier one, it would be four minutes plus two minutes equals six minutes in total for the cooldown on that type of crate. So do bear that in mind. But this shouldn't matter if you're alternating the sourcing as advised earlier, as the average time it takes to complete each source mission should be longer than the cooldown. There are a total of seven types of selling missions you can get, with the best one being the Skylift. And the worst one being the eight, yes, eight Havoc helicopters. If you do get a seller mission you're not too fond of or don't have the manpower to safely complete it, you can reload into a new lobby, but this will mean a loss of some of your stock that may need to be replenished before selling. To be honest, most of the selling missions are not very solo friendly, as most of them will have at least two vehicles to deliver, even if you keep your crates to just 10. Selling a 10 crate drop from tier 2, which hold jewellery, art and animal materials, which will activate the 12% bonus, will net you a minimum of $336,000. However, selling in a full public lobby will mean a bonus of 50% on top of that, equating to over $500,000. But the big bucks, as mentioned before, are in the tier 1 crates, which are narcotics, chemicals or medical supplies. Filling your warehouse with 50 of these bad boys will net you $1.5 million plus the 70% bonus, which equates to $2.55 million. Selling these in a full public lobby and getting a maximum high demand bonus of 50% on top of that will net you just over $3.8 million. Ron will take a small cut of your selling profit, but this is minimal. Before selling, I suggest becoming a CEO so you can activate Ghost Organization if need be. While Ghost, neither of you or your product will be visible on the map to other players. Bear in mind that going off radar using Leicester will only hide your character and not your product, so griefers can still see where you are and what you're doing. Now let's look at what this all means in real terms, time and money. Assuming you sourced your 50 crates as a two-player, as suggested, meaning 25 source emissions in total for each player, with each mission taking approximately 6 minutes on average to complete, that equates to around 5 hours. 5 hours to make up $3.8 million equates to $760,000 per hour. As it stands, if these were to eventually go and double money event weeks in the future, you're looking at around $1.67 million per hour. I have to stress that these are based on two players completing the missions back to back and switching the host, and probably more people helping you sell, so do bear that in mind. If you were to do the solo method and only pick up the tier 2 stocks, you're looking at 8 minutes on average to complete a mission. This equates to 80 minutes to get the 10 crates you need to activate the 12% bonus, which could sell for as much as half a million dollars, which works out to $375,000 per hour a massive difference compared to doing these with a friend and ultimately isn't worth doing. A major drawback of the full stock selling missions in public lobbies is how you will usually have to leave some stock behind. Not ideal when the lack of hangar locations means it's highly likely someone else will spawn in close by and could potentially blow up all of your product. Ultimately, it's up to you to decide whether you think these are worth it for the payout. But at least there is yet another viable option to make millions, rather than what you are all probably used to and bored of. Personally, I wouldn't invest too much time in these unless they do end up being double money, as there are better ways to get more money for the time and effort. I have made many other business guides which you'll also be interested in, so I'll leave the links for those below. How would you now rate this business in comparison to some of the others? So if you found this video useful, please drop it a like and maybe consider subscribing for more. I'm Beats Down. And I'll see you in the next one.